so uh, it, it was hard to follow what was going on inside the court because there were no cameras in the court. But like I said, Laffey on the Mastodons was live tweeting a bunch of journalists who were there. And, and I was going back and forth between CNN and MSNBC. But um, so much of the coverage these days is so um, unwatchable. And I'm not talking about the coverage of Trump uh, that, that I just I have to turn it off. Because I can't, I can't take it. So, what did you take away from uh, today's, uh, not festivities, from today's events, Spaco? (laughs) The festivities. Well, the one thing that is great about Laffy on the stream is she's pulling from three different reporters Mm -hmm. who are actually putting out the information that is going on inside the courtroom. And I was uh, talking about this with uh, Glenn Kirshner on Sunday and how important it is going to be to get the trials of Trump televised. Because when it's not, what happens is the media focuses on what happens outside That's right. the trial. The video is there. Right. So. Laffy did a great job, and one of the things that I found out was in the actual uh, testimony, they, they had a Forbes audio. There's a, there's a Forbes story that was done uh, last year, and it was about the way that Trump took his assets <laughs> and changed them. So to speak. And so I, they played it in the court, and it was very quiet. People couldn't hear it. And what was sad about this is because that – report was a very clear case of how Trump manipulates his numbers. So what I did is I found the uh, I found the video, the audio from the Forbes story, and I'm not going to put up the audio just like I don't like want to put up what he said outside the court because it's not very clear. In the story itself, what was great was they showed how he lied. For example, um, Trump says, well, uh, if I wanted to sell 40 Wall Street, I'd get $750 million for it tomorrow. And they point out, I'll do my pop-up video, boop, that figure was $15 million higher than the $735 million listed on his personal balance sheet and $210 million higher than the $540 million that Cushman and Wakefield determine as it's already questionable appeal. So, Boom, right off the bat, they show, he says it, and there's a lie, but there's nobody to correct it. Then he goes in, he says, the square footage is, the actual square footage is 1,165,207. And he says, Trump says, is actually 1.3. By the way, it's 1.3, to be honest with you. To be honest with you, that's something new. Then says, yeah. Sorry. I always love it when people say, you trust me. Yeah. Um, and then the reporter goes on about what they have as their net operating income. It's $24 million. And Trump's like, well, where'd you get that from? We're going to get make $64 million net net after debt service this year. And then, again, once again, he boosts the, the $24 million figure uh, up just a few minutes later. And this is what he does throughout that thing. And what's interesting about this audio is it also has Weisselberg in there as well as to Forbes reporter. And Weisselberg supports Trump's lies Mm -hmm. talking about, you know, how much the mortgage rate is and, you Mm -hmm. know, it's 2.5%. No, it's actually 3.65%. So the whole thing is like this of him trying to inflate his numbers in real time with the people at Forbes. And when he doesn't get what he wants, he ends up with saying, you know, Forbes is a bankrupt magazine that doesn't know what they're talking <laughs> because about. Because it knocked you him know. off the billionaires list because he's yes, not a yes. billionaire. Yeah. So these are the kinds of things that happen. And the thing that I was wanting to do, and I, I put a couple of posts up on Crooks and Liars recently, and it's something that I think that we really have to pay attention to is the media really gets sucked into doing the back and forth with Trump. He makes an outrageous claim and they then will then, you know, repeat it in a way just to to debunk it. But it keeps getting that frame out there of repeating that information. 
And the most recent thing that he did involved the judge's clerk. Now, did you did you hear what had happened with that? Well, I know that he kept uh, he kept calling her out. Uh, they made all kinds of claims against her. One that she was Chuck Schumer's girlfriend because. Whoa, she once posed for a picture with him. That's the kind of shit they do regularly. Right. So I don't know what the latest. I mean, they've, they've, uh, they've, uh, I believe, doxed her successfully, given out her information online. Um, they've uh, ascribed her to a romantic relationship with the, uh, the Senate majority leader. And, um, they've said she's some kind of a democratic operative, which, you know right. what? Get a fucking life. So you have now repeated all of their smears. Yes. In the uh, top, so that's exactly what they want. Yeah. And the first time that this happened, the judge, you know, gave Trump the the, the fine, and then he gave him like another fine and ad admission. This most recently, the lawyers, uh, Trump's oh, lawyers, yes. the lawyers started it, them. and then the then the judge admonished them. You too cannot speak about my staff. As if that right. was unreasonable. And that's what got picked up in coverage then. So the the, the lawyers succeeded in doing that. And um, they had uh, Adam Kleifeld, who was, uh, again, got to follow Laffey on yes. what's going on. Adam Kleifeld, right? Class, K-L-A-S-F-E-L-D? Yeah, Kleifeld. Right. right. He pointed out that this is – the lawyer's strategy is to discredit and to – uh, try and basically uh, make the case appealable so that that it will be coming out as some sort of uh, you know bias from the judge. And that is one of the reasons they're hoping to get the judge pissed off, overreact about that, and go after the attorneys. Now, in today's hearing, after the judge was pissed off about some other things, and they had a uh, a break. And uh, Haba, 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 whatever his <laughs> Haba, name is. Haba, the, Haba, yeah. <laughs> Haba, Haba, Haba. Um, she came out and she put a partial quote of something that the judge had said. And then that was spread on social media, on true social. And I'm not going to say what that partial quote is because as, you know, empty wheel says, I don't want to be a data mule for right, that. Right, right. But what they're doing at this point is trying to change what it was that is going out. They pull the headline they want for Truth Social that then the media will pick up on is saying that's what it is. The basic point of this particular changing this is that we have no kind of like social media strategy to push back. And the media feels obligated to reprint the outside the courtroom yep. extrajudicial information yep. as part of their yep. story. Yeah, and Hamina Hamina, whatever her name is, um, she talked about uh, the judge as something about like a raving lunatic. And you know what? On my screen, I only saw one raving lunatic today. It was her. <laughs> I've got a great, Not him. A great illustration of him yeah. exploding on this. Yeah. Um, so what I'm hoping that is, you know, what's, what's going to come out of this is there's going to be the stories about how badly he lost in his comments. And this is the case that is the lawyers and the legal experts will say, we're going to win in this. What we have to do, and I think it's hard for us as being we, because you know I consider myself somewhat of a you know, journalist adjacent as a blogger, mm -hmm. is how do we repeat the story that is, this is a, loss for Trump legally, but it can also be a way to hurt him in the social media, in the media, politically, uh, in a way that is not, you know, that, that acknowledges that the legal case is really bad for him. I mean, that's something we have to do. It's like, okay, we yeah. can say that, um, but we need to say, how do we, you know, like what's, and this is what I kept thinking about, like, what is the PR strategy or the media strategy or the social media strategy of the good guys to say, um, stop repeating this. Here's how we, you know, show that we're, uh, we're crushing him and that he, and the media keeps coming up and say, well, the base loves it. Mm-hmm. 
Um, no. Well, you know, and and I, I, look, I can't speak for the media anymore. I'm watching a lot of um, uh, media malpractice this yeah. weekend and beyond with the, with the other events that are happening in our world that uh, I'm going to take a little break from for a while now because it gets me kind of crazy. Although, who knows, by the end of the hour... Yeah, you may get more of it. But um, hey, Spaco, our friend Thanks. Lisa Graves is on the line, so oh, I'm going to let you go. Lisa for me. Well, you She's just did. Wonderful. You just did.